Having a better understanding of depth of field is important in the world of photography. It will allow you to capture the images that you want to capture with the blur that you want to get. Now, if you're relatively new to the world of DSLRs and you're shooting with a camera like this, which is the Nikon D3400, stay tuned and I'll do my best to break this down so that you understand just how this works. I recently created a video on the Fearsome 4, also known as PSA and M modes. Now the letter A stands for Aperture Priority, and as I mentioned in that video, Aperture is what controls the depth of focus. Now to level set, I'm going to make this video relatively short, but I want to go over some key concepts. Since creating that video, I've received a handful of questions about if you have a group portrait, how do you shoot it? Where do you focus? And what is the depth of focus if you set the aperture to a certain number? Now these are all great questions and I decided to leverage an old school chalkboard and draw this up for us. I'm shooting this video in 1080p and you may need to zoom in to see this. I hope this will render well on the video. As we look at this though, I want you to understand that there are smartphone applications to help demonstrate this and one of them is called Hyperfocal Pro. Now I'm in no way affiliated with them, it's just an application that I've used over the years to help me better understand this concept in the event I ever need more clarity on it. So let's go over this real quick. What we have to determine the appropriate focal depth is the lens, the aperture, and the distance. Now these three components figure into our focal depth. And what I've done here is just kind of laid out a scenario. Now keeping in mind, with the Nikon D3400, it comes with a kit lens as an 18 to 55. Now if we set that lens to 35 millimeters, roughly, that's what we're zoomed at, and our f-stop is set to 5.6, and we are 10 feet away from our subject, what does this mean? Well, here we go. This right here denotes our camera. And so our camera, again, is 10 feet away from our subject, and I just drew a stick figure here. And what this means is that when you focus, and this is a general rule of thumb, is that roughly one-third of your focal plane will be in front of your subject and two-thirds behind. Now that's a very general rule of thumb, and that will slide depending on these factors up here. But given what we have right here, Again, if we're 10 feet away from our subject, and say I'm focused in on the eyeball right here, this means that we are actually in focus 7.9 feet from our camera. So again, we're focused at 10 feet, but we actually start our focus at 7.9 feet, and it goes all the way out to 13.5 feet. So this little notation that I've laid out right here kind of looks like a fence but it means everything within the fence right here will be in focus so that's important to understand if you're taking a group shot our total focal plane right here is 5.6 feet so again we have 5.6 feet of total focal plane which is good now what's this number over here this is called hyperfocal distance now we can do a little more research on this if you want. I have 37.9 feet down right here. Now this means that if you were to keep these parameters right here, 35 millimeters at 5.6 f-stop, if you were to focus on a subject that is 37.9 feet away, everything from that distance to infinity will be in focus. Again, that's called the hyperfocal distance. Now you might look at all this and think, you know, it's confusing, right? But keeping in mind, as I mentioned, there are smartphone apps to help, and it's not something you need to focus on heavily, it's just something you should understand. And keeping in mind when you got your camera and you're out shooting, just know to focus, if you're doing a portrait, focus on the eyeball. And know that you'll have some room in front that'll be in focus and some room behind keeping in mind as well that if you were to drop this down right here to say an f-stop of 2, now you're thinking, 
with the lens kit that came with the D3400, you can't get that low, and that is true. But if you go with a fixed 50 millimeter, which is kind of the backup lens for a lot of photographers, it's usually a fixed 35 or the fixed 50, but you can get that f-stop down really low. Well, if you're fixed 50 and you're at an f-stop of 2, and your distance is, say, at 5 feet, for example, your focal plane is roughly about a quarter to a third of one foot. So think about that, maybe four inches. That's all you have. So it's probably like that. Now, that's what creates that nice background blur in portraits. It is said that a picture or a drawing is worth a thousand words. Well, I'm not sure my drawing was quite worth a thousand words, but I hope it helped you to better understand depth of focus. And if you are shooting with the Nikon D3400 or any other entry-level camera, take a look at the kit lens that came along with it and take a look at your f-stop at the aperture and what that lens is capable of doing. Now with the 18 to 55 here, this is capable of going from 3.5 to 5.6. If you haven't ventured out into any other fixed lens, one to consider might be this one right here. This is the fixed 50 from Nikon. Now a lot of photographers go after a fixed 50 or a fixed 35 for good reason. One, it's relatively inexpensive and two, you can drive the f-stop all the way down to 1.8 and in some cases 1.4. And what that allows you to do is to create that awesome background blur. And hopefully you have a better understanding of how to determine the focal plane, keeping in mind that there is actually a formula if you want to pull out a pen and a piece of paper and try to work that out. But in today's technology, more often than not, you're going to want to leverage an online application. And as I mentioned before, I'm not affiliated with any given application, but the one I've used for years is Hyperfocal Pro, and this is what it looks like. So as you can see on here, it's got a nice little graphical representation, and it will tell you based on your lens and your aperture and your focal distance to your subject, just what to expect from your focal plane. So with all that said, I think next up might be something on night photography, so stay tuned. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. I might post them about anything that happens in the real world. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.